welcome to In Touch Super Sports, only rugby show which comes to you live on Facebook every Thursday. Of course, you can watch us on Super Sports 1 Thursday nights at 7.30. And if load shedding is cramping your style, make sure that you catch, catch up or just check us out on YouTube. Today on the show, we uh, check in with Lala Hirayama at Japan Day. We've got um, some thoughts from Dan Carter on Japan as well. And today in studio, we are joined by Captain Fantastic, the man himself, Philip Sneiman. The Blitzbooker, of course, recently had a very important tour where they suffered a really disappointing result and then clawed their way back into things to claim the Vancouver Sevens title for the first time ever. He's also going to make some coffee since, uh, well, that's actually his true love. Uh, speaking of true loves, I'm going to ask him about that lovely wife of his, hashtag Bestie. Have you seen that on Instagram? And then we can't speak to Philip without um, talking about that phenomenal team vibe that they've cultivated at the Springbok Sevens. Uh, this is a clip from a docu we did on them about two years ago, Cultivating Team Excellence. In our team we have guys from Transkai, we have guys from the Eastern Cape, we have guys from Bloemfontein, Nelspreet, Philip Poulos and yeah, so putting all of that, like that blends together to, to get that perfect system is really difficult and that's what we said, listen, we, we're going to create a Springbok 7 culture and that's where everything actually started and then everybody needs to buy in, whether you're from Transka, whether you're from Uganda. Um, you're going to buy into this and then you're going to go out and put everything aside and you're going to start living out team culture because we believe it's a positive culture and we believe we can touch people's lives through our culture. Certainly touching many lives through your culture. Welcome, Philip Snowman. It's great to have you on the show. Hi, Alma. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It's always nice to come and visit you guys. We managed to import you all the way from Stellenbosch on Human Rights Day. So we, we needed to make full use of this opportunity. We're going to have some coffee made by Philip himself in a bit. But let's talk about the real rugby happening on the pitch. Um, the stuff we've been seeing over the last while has been so immensely impressive from the perspective that you guys suffered a very disappointing tournament in Las Vegas. Lots of people went, oh, the blitz box are done. They are down and out. They're never going to be the same again. We've seen the best of them. What was that experience like, suffering that disappointment in that week leading into the Vancouver Sevens, which you ultimately won? Yeah, Alma, and we always knew it was going to be a difficult year for us. I'm losing a lot of guys to Super Rugby, a couple guys that's injured. Um, but also knew we have the talent and do we have the, the foundation to our system that will, that will keep on, um, or that, that Sevens can strive on. So we knew it was just a matter of time and me and Coach Neil actually had a chat in the beginning of this year and said, listen, the, like in the previous years, we started off the bang winning four tournaments and then towards the end we're actually slacking down. And this year we, we think it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a slow start and towards the end of the season, hopefully the guys will gel and we can pick it up. And I think that's exactly what happened. Um, a slow start, um, not the greatest of weekends in, in, in Vegas, but we knew if we're just going to finish one or two games we're going to use our opportunities and start clicking and gelling as a team and buying into the system the team will perform again and really grateful for this one and you guys are making some very young men household names in the process Salvin Davids went I mean viral with that crazy kick rescue of his and um, JC Pretorius a guy we saw at Craven Week a few years ago um, coming through the ranks very early very young um, and has insane apparently speed yeah, he's very quick for a forward, um, I must say. Um, and also, I think he got the under-21 um, forward player of the year. Um, coming back to Selvin, um, I can't believe that guy. I haven't played in a final before. Uh, when we played that final, coach asked, listen, how many guys this will be these first finals and see guys put up their hands? So just to put that in perspective, um, we are in a rebuilding phase, but we also don't want to shy behind it. Um, we are ready and... We, we, we believe the youngsters are ready to, to perform under the big lights. So really happy with the way the guys came through. And I believe Selvin and, and Jason, all the other youngsters, are going to be the next superstars already. They're already superstars. So. I guess it's probably um, a great testament to, to the kind of support you guys as the few seniors on this tour had to have given all of those youngsters. But is there maybe some of that magic that comes through when you don't know how big and how massive the opportunity is to play in a final? Maybe it's that beginner's luck thing that just carries you because you're just oblivious. You're so young and you feel infinitely powerful. 
Yes. Um, so obviously the experience will help a little bit. And playing in your first final, I don't think you need any more motivation. Standing there in front of the crowd, luckily for us, there was a lot of South Africans in the crowd um, singing the national anthem. And no, listen, this is something bigger than just an, a normal game. So I think everything was up for it. All the guys were up for it. Um, the motivation was right. Um, and the, guy was ready, the guys were ready to perform. So um, yeah, guys like Salvin Davis coming through, not e only in the dream team, but play over the final. So they have that BMT and really happy guys are really Stedman Hans all the youngsters mm -hmm. coming through so our job as senior players is actually very easy just keep the guys calm and make sure um, they're happy and make sure they understand the game plan and then they know they will bring the, the energy after that win I heard um, Neil Powell saying that he could feel something clicked in the week you guys were happy you were dancing you were singing who is the guy leading the Gies? Yeah, um, losing a guy like um, Roscoe Speckman, Chris Dry, not on tour, so um, I think the whole dynamics have changed. Um, um, I remember the music that we used to listen to the bus, all of a sudden I don't know, even know the words anymore because it, it's like the new generation. Um, but guys like Salvin David, Zane David, is, yeah, he's full of spirit and, and full of energy. Yeah. So the youngsters bring something else to the team and it's nice to feel that and actually give the, all the guys in the team some, some energy and, and keep us on our toes. So I think everybody brings a little bit to the party, but I think the, the two David brothers, um, they're really the life of the party. Um, speaking of a brotherhood um, equal to none, the Chiefs uh, saw a bit of a turnaround in their fortunes courtesy of the McKenzie brothers. Uh, the Chiefs are now bottom of the log, hard to believe, back-to-back -back former Super Rugby champions. They're in Pretoria this weekend to face a cruising Vodacom Bulls side, so it's going to be a tough challenge for them. We caught up with Marty and Damien McKenzie and asked them uh, about the meanest things they did to one another when they were kids, because you know siblings. I'm Damien McKenzie. I'm Marty McKenzie. We are brothers playing for the Galahad Chiefs. And I'm the oldest. Um, what's the meanest thing Marty's done to me? Probably the old, old fashioned handbag. Just want to chuck a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> the old one, two. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he hit butter me with a motorbike helmet on once because I uh, dropped the rock on a hedgehog's head and he likes the animals. Oh, that's snorkel's <laughs> That's why he reckons I've got a broken nose. Snorkel. <laughs> We're pretty competitive, but there's not a real rivalry between us, but I think there's a, a score to settle here today. Well, we're going to see how many uh, the tissues we can pull out, or who can pull out the fastest. It'd be quite handy, <laughs> this I can imagine. So we'll go in three, two, one. Oh, no. Dude. Not <laughs> the clubs. <laughs> I just want to keep up, man. Done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done to Damien McKenzie, uh, showing some uh, particular skill under pressure there. Not sure if it's uh, entirely applicable to rugby. Um, so, Philip, let's get back to your story. Um, a lot of people see the brotherhood that goes into the blitz box and the performances that you guys deliver on, on, the, on the pitch. But we only really get an insight into your personal life on Instagram, where hashtag SDBestie is uh, kind of constantly... I saw you posted a photo this morning of you guys going for, for brunch out uh, in Stellenbosch as well. She's a doctor, so she's got a pretty real job back home. You've got a little girl, so plenty to, 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 to keep running back home when you're out on tour. What is Esty's approach and how does she manage the fact that you lead a pretty interesting life? Yes, um, to be brutal honest, she's actually the one with the real job um, in our um, marriage. So, um, but yeah, listen, to raise a kid half the time by your own, to have a full-time job, and to run the house, household um, and still support your husband when he's on tour. Um, really, um, she's some, some, someone special. Um, and yeah, spending time with her and the little one, Emily, um, yeah, it's, it's time, you don't have so much time at home, especially when the season kicks off 
um, basically two and a half weeks on two, two or two and a half weeks back home. So you need to spend that that time wisely and, and make sure you you, you actually um, connected with them when you back at home. Um, so yeah, I think Esther, I think she deserves a medal. Uh, she's a superwoman. If, if if somebody wants to go and watch her movie, Esther is starring in the new um, super <laughs> like Marvel's movie. She's in there. Captain um, Esther. Yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, for all the the wives, and it's easy for us going on to a. You have a roommate every every night when you go to to dinner table. There's 12 guys sitting around table. Um, all the moms, all the wives, the girlfriends um, staying behind, it's only them and the little ones, or maybe cooking for themselves. So they're actually the, the, the ones that suffer the most when we go on tour. So yeah, we were truly grateful to have them in our lives. Now, um, when did you meet Esty Bestie? Because I just feel like she's kind of always been there. Yeah, um, we, yeah, actually, Back in school, I was matric. She was um, standard nine or grade 12, grade 11, and went out for a short period of time. Um, then I went to varsity. She was still in school. And three years down the line, we got back together. Um, four years together, engaged for a year. Then I moved to Stellenbosch with the Sevens after playing for the Cheetahs. And then she joined me um, in 2013. And since then, um, we really enjoy life in Stellenbosch. So you are from the southern part of the Free State, a small town called Philippoulis. Um, Philippoulis also brought to the world the services of Adrian Strauss, just, you know, another national captain, yeah. no biggie. Um, there's clearly something in the water there. Yeah, um, the other day we were chatting on tour and like, where are you from, where? And, and people were saying like, how big is Philippoulis? No, I think without a doubt, probably the smallest town in South Africa, and there's no man, it can't be. And when they Googled it, I think there's 3,500 people living in Philippoulis, just to put it in perspective for people that haven't been there or anything. <laughs> but it's really a beautiful, full town and love to go back there, visit my, my cousins and yeah, really a good life. Clearly plenty of talent. If I was a scout, just, you know, dropping a hint there, maybe someone must go find us another captain down there. Um, we, uh, speaking of talent, caught up with Dan Carter recently since he was in South Africa as uh, MasterCard unveiled him as well as Brian Banner as their ambassadors for Rugby World Cup 2019. Japan are perfectionists, okay? They have to make sure everything is perfect and and everything runs on time there and, and they're really proud of their country. You know, it hasn't been westernised. It's, it's, you know, there's incredible Japanese culture and, and I think that's what's going to make this Rugby World Cup so special is it's, it's a chance for them to showcase their beautiful country, their amazing Japanese culture to the rest of the world. And it's something very different to a Rugby World Cup in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, the UK, you know, it's, it's a very different place, country. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be quite unique. First time it's Rugby World Cup's been held in Asia, so that's going to be going to be great. My predictions, All Blacks, of course, <laughs> to, to go all the way, but there's a lot more competition than there was a couple of years ago, so it's, it's fantastic to see all the other nations um, building into this World Cup so I can't say All Blacks as confidently as I could potentially a couple of years ago because there's so much more competition and that's exactly what you want at a World Cup. You want all these international teams at the peak of their powers and, and I, I think we'll see that but I'm, I'm hoping and confident that, that the All Blacks will, will be there at the final and be able to hold up the, the, the World Cup again. Thank you so much to everyone commenting on Facebook. Peter Bayers, Adeyemi, Eddie Maseko and Blessed. Uh, Mike Janssen who says, if Philip doesn't know the words to the youngsters song, imagine how old the rest of us would feel in that bus. If uh, you have a question for Philip, make sure uh, to comment and uh, I'll try and make sure we get you a proper answer. Now, Philip, I looked at Instagram when you guys were traveling to Las Vegas and you fly from Cape Town to London and then across. That is a lot of traveling and an immense amount of jet lag, I imagine. What are your jet lag combating tips? Have you got, have you figured things out uh, over these years that you've spent in the Sevens program? Yes, um, yeah, it is a long trip. First you fly from Cape Town to, to, to London and then an eight hour lay or stop over there and then another 11 hour flight to, to, to Vegas. So yeah, it, it's quite intense and uh, yeah, 
I'm a firm believer you need to, at some point in that trip, you need to take a sleeping pill and try to fit into the hours as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And then also um, don't sleep when, 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 when it's actually daytime in your final destination and then make sure you drink a lot of coffee um, to stay awake in that time. When you get there, exactly. rely on the coffee. We're going we're gonna to chat coffee shortly. Before we get to coffee, um, I know that you used to say that Sebelo Sinatla was just sleeping, you know, for most of your tours, if, if there was like five minutes downtime, he'd be snoring. Um, at the moment, who are the guys who, who tend to, you know, be knocked out as soon as the wheels are moving somewhere? Yeah, there's two guys that stand out out of the top of my mind, Justin Gedult and Salvin Davids. Um, they put their earphones and even before the wheels are turning, they lie on somebody's shoulder and they just sleep. Even if it's five minutes, two minutes to a restaurant, they can sleep. I don't know how they do it, but they <laughs> manage to do it. So. <laughs> now, with all the new faces in the team, I'm sure you guys are um, tour guiding quite a bit, the seniors. I mean, I'm sure you're showing them around. I know that you guys have, have often said that you enjoy Vancouver. Uh, who was the keenest tourist this time around? Yeah, Stedman Gaunt is always keen to go and explore. Um, he likes to walk around and explore the town. So I think Stedman and then also Miller Duplessis. Um, he enjoys um, a, a pretty scenery. And yeah, then Vanekok is willing to show them around. Um, he won't stand back for anything. And even if it's his fifth time, he'll still do it with the guys. And he's always, always game for it. So you guys have mentioned Vancouver before. Uh, your favorite destinations on tour at the moment? Um, I would say Sydney and Vancouver. Sydney and Vancouver, those two top. Yeah. Um, Vanderkoek recently eloped. We all just, it just caught all of us off guard on Instagram because we see players getting engaged and we ex ex expect a big lavish wedding. Did you guys know this was happening? Yeah, I had an idea because he missed a day of training. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they planned something special and I'm pretty sure, um, but it's not for me to tell any, or to say anything about it. Um, they will elaborate and they will tell people when the time is ready. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, he always liked to do stuff differently and mm. that's just the way he is and, and he likes it. So, yeah. And him and Zonika have also been together since school. Yeah, There's since clearly forever. something to be said. Since I've met Werner and even before, like they, they've been together, you can't mention the one's name without um, thinking about the other one. Without so the other. Werner and Zanika is like, and like, yeah, they're, 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 they're like a package deal. Yeah, they're, they're a great combo. Exactly. And they're quite a lot of fun. Both of them yes. have, you know, they just have so much here. So it's, uh, it's great to be around them. Um, when we return, I think it's time for us to get cracking and make some coffee. And you can tell us all about uh, the coffee brand that you've created alongside your teammates. Uh, you can buy it very soon. They're even going to have a retail store. We'll get the whole scoop on that. Speaking of scoops, though, Lala Hirayama was out celebrating Japan Day in the Western Cape. I know, I was surprised as well. But they did uh, go all out, and she managed to catch up with a few pretty familiar rugby faces out there. Over to Lala. Hey, hey, all right, so I'm out in Cape Town, in Stellenbosch. Actually, we're out at the Slow Market, which is going to play host to Japan Day Rugby Edition. You know, since it is the Rugby World Cup year, we thought we'd get a little taste of what people can expect. Plus, there are a couple familiar faces, apparently, that we might bump into. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. What's going on here? No, I think this is like people are honoring Japan Day. Everybody's out here and it's an awesome market. And yeah, a lot of people are learning about Japan. This awesome market, cool food as well. And yeah, for me, I was just speaking a little bit about uh, what, what Panasonic is doing, running a competition so people can go watch um, a game in Japan. When we came here, we don't, even, we don't even know what to expect, but it's coming here, it's such an amazing event where where the guys explain everybody, uh, just get South Africa used to the, the, the World Cup and into that spirit and getting ready for to support the Springboks and just a few questions you want to ask regarding travelling. Yeah, there was a few travelling um, questions and how much money the Oaks want to take with. You've never been, no. but what have you taken away from today? Um, well, yeah, I just want to go. The bottom line <laughs> is I want to go. I'm going to take a walk around the market now and see what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one thing I do know, I had friends from Japan, from school and everything, and very friendly people, so I really want to go and people People speak a lot about it. My dad will be going to the World Cup, I think. So um, you're not going? No, we've Which got pre-season, so right, we've got to. Yeah, we we've been in the thick of things. Obviously, with Cape Town coming up, or straight after that, we've got to be loud on the swing of things. So yeah, unfortunately, I'll be missing out on that, but I'll definitely be watching and envy everybody that's there walking around. You played mm. in Japan before. What was the culture like for you? That experience. It was really good. Um, I, I really think the people are way too kind. Yeah. Um, like everybody was. 
literally helping you around because obviously with the language and stuff it's pretty difficult to get around but like you can see like everybody's helping you around and trying to ask you where you're going and people are very very kind there the food is also exquisite it's something that we not used to you know western ways sure. it's it's literally um the healthier way of living you know that's why the people stay and i think like the, the way that the people are active about this like mm. it's pretty impressive you know people walk every single way which is quite good that's why you know they you know they stay healthy and they live such a long time so this has got to be my favorite oh my goodness how excited are you for the rugby world cup do a little dance show me how excited you are <laughs> Bulky bringing the most. Now, speaking of the most, Philip Snyman rocked up here with a backpack and a full range of uh, coffee paraphernalia. Is this your typical travel kit? Yes. Uh, whenever I go onto the plane, I take my travel kit with me because I, I like to make my own coffee. Um, so if I'm on a plane, I ask for boiling water and I can make my own coffee there. And what do the people who sit next to you on the plane have to say on the matter? First, they look a little bit like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> Something illegal on the plane. And then afterwards, they ask me if it will be able to make them also a cup. So, so you're just spreading yeah. the coffee love exactly. everywhere you go. I believe everybody should enjoy it, so yeah. Okay, so speaking of everybody enjoying it, 18 coffee, uh, the pilot, a uh, well-rounded blend. Tell me about this. Yes, um, there's actually a story on the back side. Um, so we have a double logo. But it started, um, obviously, when we go into where we like to explore coffee shops and we like to find the best coffee shops in the world. And after a couple of years, myself, Cecil Africa, and Carl Brown decided, listen, let's do something. We're not going to play forever, so let's do something that we can stay friends forever. And we decided to do the coffee thing because it's our second love after rugby. And <laughs> Yeah, so we and just, STC. I was about to, but they're in the league of their own, the wife. So, um, so after rugby, this the coffee thing, and yeah, we came up with this this blend, and each yeah, we gave the input, and just to give the the feedback on the 18. So, norm, not normally for the past 60 games, I was number two, Kyle was number six, and Cecil 10. So together we 18, and then if you know a little bit about coffee, 18 grams for the perfect double shot espresso. And then, yeah, we established in 2018. So the whole story is on the back side of the pouch, so. Yeah. Philip, Kyle, and Cecil. So now where can people, you can get cracking on the coffee, but where do people get hold of the coffee? Yes, yeah, so at the moment, um, there's one or two stores selling it um, in Stellenbosch, mm -hmm. but we are also very excited to announce that from 1st of, April. Mm. People can actually start ordering online um, or visit our Instagram page or Facebook page and then they can order the coffee and we make sure we deliver it to them in a day or two, free delivery. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to share that and to share our coffee with everybody in South Africa. What is this? What are, You've got a scale going here. Yes. Yeah, so Coffee is all about ratio and the perfect grind, so that's why I also, also, always take my grinder also. You need to grind the beans fresh. And then to get the ratio right, um, you need to get the right amount of water. So you can't have a double shot espresso that's 50 grams or 50 milliliters. The perfect double shot espresso is around about 30, 32 mils of coffee. And that will do. So this is your perfect double shot now. 30.3, there you go. Okay, what, yes. so this thing is basically just allowing you to press yes, the water uh, through. It's like a, a big espresso machine, so okay. just with air like hydraulic, you, it's a, a manual press and they call it a nano hand press. Um, so you can see this is your double shot espresso and you get a nice creamer on top and you can actually make a nice cappuccino flat white if you have a steamer with you. And this, is, this whole setup is also bonus round, load shedding proof. Yeah, so I, we, you can actually charge the grinder and then you can grind your grind. There's a light to show you and you can also weigh your beans. So take this on tour with a hand grinder because if the battery is flat, I can hand grind also and you need to grind your beans fresh or I believe that, but not everybody um, like to like go it. through that. So. That is some serious coffee nerding happening right here. And this is like you do this on tour everywhere you go. Yes, um, normally me and Carl 
brownie sharing rooms and we have like um, six or seven different ways of making coffee. So this is only the one. You can't travel with everything in your backpack. There's not space for it. But in my big bag, there's only one or two pairs of boots, one or two t-shirts and then a whole lot of coffee <laughs> stuff. So make sure you have the right stuff on tour and keep the guys smiling. I've heard stories about this, but it is impressive. Okay. Speaking of stories, uh, I haven't uh, made my Super Brew picks and considering it's a long weekend, we need to just remind people to not forget. This weekend I need some help. The Hurricanes are hosting the Stormers Saturday morning in Wellington. Yeah, I think it's always difficult playing in New Zealand, but I'm going to go for the Stormers. Stormers by? Stormers by five. Okay, they did score a big win over the Haguares, so we'll credit yeah. them for that. Waratahs Crusaders? Even though they're playing in Sydney, I'll go the Crusaders, 14 points. 14. Okay, Sunwolves hosting the Lions. This is in Singapore, a city which is so incredibly humid that I cannot imagine playing rugby there. <laughs> yes, Singapore is very hot in the humidity. Um, I believe they'll be up for the game. We heard there's some news going around. Um, but still, I think the Lions are hungry and I think Lions will put them away with eight points. Eight points. Bulls Chiefs at Loftus. Bulls by mm. 11. Bulls by 11, that's a proper call. Yes. Of course, plenty of your former colleagues I now running them. out in I that jersey. Them. And the Sharks hosting the Rebels in Durban. In Durban, I would say Sharks by 7. Sharks by 7. So there you have it. Um, we're not giving any guarantees, but generally our guests' picks do pretty well. Thank you for joining us, Philip, and for the fantastic double shot. Uh, espresso. Um, I usually have mine with quite a lot more milk, but this is brilliant. Um, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Alma. Yeah, thank, it's always great to, to come and visit you guys, and thanks for the support. Um, it's really, really grateful for that. Oh, you guys always make us so proud. So make sure that you tune in again next week. In touch. We'll be back same time, same place. Let us know who you would like to get to know a little better. Maybe we can convince them to keep feeding us. Cheers. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. And if you'd like to see some of our older episodes, click up here to subscribe to Supersport's YouTube channel over there.